If you have your Bible open to Acts chapter number 2, we'll be looking at the first four verses of Acts chapter number 2. Last Sunday, uh, we began talking about what it meant to be in one accord. One accord. To move rapidly in unison. Move forward in unison. One accord. One accord. One accord. When I think of heaven, one accord. When I think of Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, one accord. There's no fighting among the, the Godhead, the Trinity. I mean, God the Father is not mad at Jesus the Son. God the Holy, I mean, they're just together. And when we get to heaven, we're going to find out that the God, uh, everything in heaven will take after the nature of God. The angels will no longer be fighting with other angels. They've done that before, right? Uh, this group of people that fought against this group of people on earth will be one in heart. One heart, one accord. Everyone will love everyone perfectly. That means you got to love me too. Amen? Amen? There will be joy. God's joy will actually become our joy. Everyone will have joy. Everyone will have peace. Everyone will have purpose. And the one thing that we're going to have that I think we take for granted, that when we get to heaven, there will be togetherness, and it will never be divided again. One accord. But that's not the way that it is down here on earth today. Any of y'all ever heard this statement? Look out for number one because nobody else will. So what we find out is that on earth, we will have envy, jealousy, strife. We will have uh, pride, ego, anger, resentfulness, unforgiveness, and we will have divisions. Why is this? Well, it's obviously, it's called sin. Sin divides. Sin puts one against another. I never have understood how two people that God created with so much giftedness, so much brilliant, so much uh, going for them can fight with someone else just like them. Why can't those two get along? Why is it that we have to lift ourselves up by tearing someone else down? Why can't we just look beyond all those things? It's simply sin. And by the way, most of the people on earth who can't get along with others they don't understand that it's them as well. They just always blame the other. Um, done a little bit of marriage counseling over the years. Been married coming up on 35. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And everybody always says, well, it's their fault. It's their fault. They don't understand me. Hey, look, I have never seen a fuss or a fight among a married couple that it's not both and. See, some of y'all don't agree with me. That tells you the problems that we have right there. It's a sin problem. And the purpose in God allowing Jesus to come to earth to be that sacrifice was because there was something that had to happen to bridge the gap between a holy God and a sinful people. So he came to be our sacrifice to remove our sins to build a relationship between sinful people and a holy God. That sin had to be taken away. It had to be separated as far as the east is from the west. And that's what the blood of Christ did. He made a way. All the good that Christ did, we should never take for granted. Oh, the blessings of knowing God. Stand with me in honor of reading God's Word. Acts chapter 2, 
verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one, with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, we are grateful. We need you more than we know. Father, we think that we know a little bit about being together. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, make us one. One in Christ. What a blessing. As we sit in this building together, one accord. One with you. One with each other. Speak, Holy Spirit, as only you can. In your name I pray. All God's people said, Amen. you can be seated. They were all with one accord in one place. All of them. Been ten days. Ten days since Christ ascended. They came back to Jerusalem together. I'm sure there was some movement in and out. They went back to the place where the disciples had been with Jesus in the upper room. Back to the place where they saw Jesus get up and wash their feet. Set an example. Back in the place where they watched Jesus take the bread and break, broke it and blessed it and gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do you think they had a greater understanding of what that meant? When the cup that he said would represent the new covenant, the new testament in his blood, do you think they had a better understanding of it? They had been in there and their hearts have been broken because the one that they loved, who was their leader, who had gone before them, who had performed miracles, who had never seen anyone that he didn't see value in, someone that brought them together like they had never seen, someone of such immense love, but they watched him die for them, a body that was broken, people cursing him, spitting at him, such hatred. Such division. But they knew the words, Father, forgive them. Even when he was on the cross, he knew his purpose. He came to be our forgiveness, to bring us together. Love and hate can become one, one accord. And then when they saw the resurrected Christ and hope sprung in their heart. And even though there were some like Thomas who may have doubted, yet he was changed. And Peter who may have denied, but yet he was changed. And for 40 days, Jesus would just show up and take over. What glorious joy every time they saw him. But then they watched as he rose from this earth and went back home to heaven. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. He had left his ministry on earth to do the ministry of heaven. Sitting down at the right hand of the Father, praying for us, hearing our prayers, making intercession for us. Oh, what a Savior we have. Now, the angels that were there said, why are you worried about this? The same Jesus that you've seen ascend to heaven is coming back in like manner. Hope, promise, 
seeking fulfillment, no longer looking, come on now, listen, no longer being controlled by the worries of the world or the anger of someone else or, or somebody else's bad decisions. Now they, they are just linked with Christ, with his joy and his peace and his love and his goodness and his kindness, his eternal forgiveness. I was sharing with Pam this morning. Sometimes when I'm praying, I'll lift my hands up like this to praise God for all that he's done. Sometimes I turn it around so that I can receive a blessing from God. It's how we live our life, isn't it? We praise him as we receive from him. I don't want it to only be this. I also want it to be this. But to live this life, it can't be just praise. It also has to be receiving from him. One heart, one accord. I need his heart. I need his purpose. I don't know about you, but I need his love. And I'm still in a sinful world, so I need his joy. And the circumstances are around us. And by the way, they, they come upon all of us. Nobody's got a clear path. So we need peace that goes beyond understanding. We need to have the anchor of our soul, the salvation of Christ, that when the winds come and blow, and they will, that the house will not fall, but we can be protected from the storms outside. That's the picture. Storms outside, peace within. So they were in a room, praising, gloriously being touched, and unexpectedly, Something happened. Something happened. But let me tell you, something would not have happened if at verse 1 was not the state of being in that, in that room. And they all, in one accord, in one place. Church, if you're looking for God to change you to bless you, do the changing so that he can bless you. Let your heart be linking. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. But they were there in one accord, which freed up the Spirit to come do what he so chose to do. If you're holding unforgiveness, but wanting the blessing of God, if you have problems between you and another, the Bible says, lay your alms down, go get right with your brother, and then come and worship. But yet, in that moment, they were all one accord in one place, and the Holy Spirit showed up and just showed out. Suddenly, it says in verse 2, without expectation, on God's timeline, he shows up, I love this, as a rushing, mighty wind. Lynn and I were uh, staying with my parents down in East Denali when the kids were real small. And a storm was coming. We didn't know it. Uh, we were all five of us in one room. The windows were open. It's a humid night. Then all of a sudden we heard a noise and the curtains did this. Y'all look. I mean, they went straight out and Lynn and I sat straight up. Amen. And literally what happened was down below the house, a tornado had come and hit the hollow. And there were some oak trees out there like that, that it just took and twisted and snapped and popped like it wasn't nothing and literally went over the place that we stayed, came right back down about another 60 foot in front of the house, found another oak tree that was probably pre-Civil uh, pre War. It was just huge and just limbs that were about like this and just twisted and snapped and popped. And then it was gone. I'll never forget it. I looked at my kids laying on pallets in the floor, slept through the whole doggone thing. And Lynn looks at me like, what do we do? And I'm like, it's gone. What do you want me to do? <laughs> right? 
unexpectedly something powerful came. But get this, it didn't come outside, it came inside. All right? We're not worried about the circumstances outside. We're worried about what God's going to do on the inside. So many people's prayers are only talking about what's on the outside. God change this, change this, all the tr- tr- Let's just today take care of what God's going to do on the inside. And the Spirit of God rested on that place with the power of the presence of God. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He goes where he wants to go, when he wants to go, and he'll take over everywhere he wants to go. Let him blow. I think it's an amazing picture. When Elijah had a a place of complaining against God, God put him in the cleft of the rock and let the wind go by. The fire of God come by. And then it was quiet. Just to show that he could. But what he wanted it was you to be quiet in here. God's power has not been reduced one bit. He is the God of creation. If he can build it and if he can keep it, then why in the world are we complaining about it? Why are we worried about anything come against us? He's already promised us that no weapon formed against us will prosper. So the Spirit of God comes in and blows. And in verse 3, look what it says. There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Divided means there was something unique for each one. The Spirit of God is the same, but He'll do One thing for Laura and a different thing for Doug, married together. One thing for Angie, one thing for Steve, married together. All right? One thing for me, I'm up here preaching to y'all. One thing for Lynn, she's downstairs preaching at the kids. We didn't have women preachers. Yeah, she's preaching downstairs. Same God. But God gives me what I need. Come on. God gives you what you need. If God calls you to something, if God purposes you to something, he will give you what you need. Don't be envious of someone else's gift. Just nurture the one that you have. Accept the one that you have. Release yourself into the one that God's doing in your life. It was divided and It was the same. It says in verse 6, when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Now this is what happened. The Christians were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other languages. The word there for language is dialectos, where we get our word dialect from, everyone heard in their own language. So if you were from Egypt, you heard the good news of Christ in your own language. If you were from Magog up north, you heard it in your own language. Now this is not one of those quick um Language courses. If y'all heard those um, language courses, isn't one of them named Babel? Hmm. Babel actually means confusion. And what Christ was doing here, I hope you listen. You're going to miss everything I have to say if you don't hear this. What God was doing was coming in to change a judgment that God had done earlier in Genesis chapter 11. And he was reversing what he did then that separated people. Now he's bringing something now that's going to bring people together. 
Matter of fact, if you got your Bible, let's look over in Genesis chapter 10. Genesis 10, verse number 8 says this. Cush begot Nimrod. Now, this is after the flood. So let me give you a little genealogy. Y'all ever heard of a guy by the name of Noah? His son Ham. Ham had a son by the name of Cush. And verse 8 says, Cush begot Nimrod. So Noah's great grandson was named Nimrod. Y'all ever heard of him? It says in verse 8, he began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. I'm sure there was hunting of animals, but I'm not afraid that that same ability didn't bleed into something else. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Wars and rumors of wars. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, therefore it is said like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of, come on now, his kingdom. That's not great big H there. This speaks about the presence of God. That's little H speaking of the presence of Nimrod. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And he goes on to say some other names. And then in verse 11, he, he, uh, that land he went to Assyria and built Nineveh. His, his first kingdom there was in Babel, which would, is in Iraq between the Tigris and Euphrates, but it's on the Euphrates side what is below today's Baghdad, just below that. And he built that huge city there. And then later on, he went up on the, the Tigris, which is the, the further eastern river, and he went up to modern day, well, the top of uh, Iraq or maybe the lower part of Turkey, and, and he built another city there by the name of Nineveh. Y'all ever heard of Jonah? And he was sent to be a prophet to that wicked city by the name of Nineveh? Both Places, everywhere that Nimrod went, he brought who he was there. He was talented. He was gifted. But he began to, to, to be like it was before the flood. Before the flood, everybody did what they wanted. Everybody leaned upon themselves. They were immoral. And God judged the earth with the flood. Now we're down three generations and they're pushing it again. They wanted everyone together to live in cities, not being spread out, and they were all in one language. Look what it says in chapter 11, verse 1. The whole earth had one language and one speech. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they came and found a plain in the land of Shinar. That's the, the, the place between the Tigris and the Euphrates. Somewhere in there, was where the Garden of Eden was. We don't know where, but that's somewhere in that midst. And they came there and dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly, and, and had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. It reaches to the heavens. You think they had a little bit of the spirit of Lucifer, Satan, who wanted a, a, a throne alongside God? Sounds like it. Their ego and pride kept lifting them up, what they wanted, what their thoughts were. Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves. It's about us. We want people to remember. Well, we're remembering him, but it's not a good remembrance. lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down, verse 5, to see the city and the tower which the sons of men have built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one. 
They all, they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. This is what they're beginning to do. Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. God will allow it. Come. Let us go. Now, look up here on the screen. You look at it in your Bible. The us is a capital, which means it's talking about the Godhead. When he is saying, come, let us go, that's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And, and he says, come, let us go down there and confuse their language. That they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there from over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. They were there. They were doing it for themselves. God said no. So immediately he scattered them, and they all only knew their own language. He gave them their own unique languages, and they began to scatter over all the earth. Division and race. Separation, language. By the way, do we have any troubles today with divisions and separation? Do we have any trouble with race? Misunderstanding people of other cultures, of other languages, there's a division that is there. Don't y'all look too holy at me, you know there is. I mean, they could even be descendants of the same race and hate each other. Satan comes to divide and conquer, and he's pretty doggone good at it. God separated. But now we come to Acts chapter 4 and the beginning of the church. God's going to do a work. So he says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, verse 4, Acts 2, verse 4. Once again, you see the word all. And look at this word, filled. Does that mean 90% man, 10% God? Oh, let's, let's do better than that. How about 70% man, 30% God? No, 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 no. Okay, I mean, let's, let's get real ambitious. What about 10% man and 90% God? Oh, what? Y'all not listening. How many of y'all would be tickled to death if you had 10% man and 90% God? Is that what God was aiming at? No man. We forget us. We've got two eyes to see God's way. We've got one heart to love God's way. We've got one desire to have peace. Jesus said, the Shema, we're supposed to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor, how much? That means we love other people just as much as we love ourselves. By the way, I've always said that's a whole lot of love. Right? But yet God came in and said, I want you controlled by me. You can't do it, but I can in you. So I will fill you with my blessing, with my presence, with my love, with my joy. God's love, God's joy, God's peace. But yet somehow we have grown accustomed to a little bit of God and a whole lot of us. Have you ever heard anybody say, or maybe, they're, maybe they'll say, well, I know the Bible says, but. Or I know I'm supposed to, but, but I've always, or I was taught to, unless you were taught by God, don't bank on it. Why do we have so much discord in the world? Because we've got so much of us in the world. And our pride says we like that. We like control, so did Nimrod. We like having our way. We like building our kingdom, so did Nimrod. And God said, 
enough. So when the church was begun by the power of the Holy Spirit, listen, dwelling with us, filled us, baptized us, that means immersed in the Holy Spirit. Then that desire of being one accord happened. You know, it's amazing to me that in God's church, this very scripture that is the symbol of God in us becoming one, one accord, one heart, is now in the church often used as something to divide, to divide us from other Christians. We can fight over anything, can't we? Green carpet or blue carpet or having tissue on under the first pew or tissue in the back or we can fight over anything. Going to eat at Dead Lobster or Olive Garden. <laughs> Amen. We can fight over anything. And then when you don't get your say, well, I'll go, but I won't like it. And the holy God in heaven's like, I never wanted it to be this way. Church, listen. I begin this by talking about in heaven, one heart, one accord, one love, one joy, one peace, one blessing. Amen? What is God's desire for earth? The very same. The very same. And when the Holy Spirit comes and convicts you of something where you're not allowing the, the Spirit of God to have control and love and peace, what are you going to do? You're going to bow your back? Well, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want. Or are you going to just, I surrender all. I surrender all. Come on. All to Jesus, I surrender, I surrender. Say it. What are we going to do? In the coming year, we're going to have problems. Yeah. We're going to have troubles, difficulties, disagreements. Hold on. Somebody over here wants one thing. Somebody over here wants this thing. What do we do? I promise you one thing. Everybody's not going to get their way. I got another promise for you. If you think you're going to get your way in heaven, you misunderstand the plans of God. We'll be one heart and one accord, but that because we are bound together with the bounds of love won't be about me, and it won't be about you. Can we do that on earth? Will we be challenged? Yes. Can we come through it? You better believe it. You better believe it. I have more hope. I almost said that I've ever had, but I'm not sure that it's true because I just don't want to lie from the pulpit. But in my spirit, I feel more hope than I ever have had. I've given up on it being easy. And I'll be honest, I've given up on making everybody happy. Though my spirit wants to. I've come to find out that some of you aren't going to like me. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> and I could be holy and say, well, that's your fault. No. It might be some of your fault. It might be some of my fault. But I'm a sinner, just like you are. I hadn't got it all figured out. And I'm not going to judge you. 
and I hope you don't judge me. But there's something amazing that can happen if we make a desire to come together in one heart and one accord. I know Satan's going to try to divide us. Don't let him. I believe God's going to do something amazing in New Holland. I believe God's going to do something amazing in, in, in Hall County. I believe God's going to do something amazing in the world. I think it's last days. I think that God's coming soon. And I know that He's going to push real hard for Christ in the last days. I think there's going to be a division. I think that there's going to be those who love Jesus are going to have an opportunity to love Him more than they ever have before. And those that have grown cold, Laodicea, those that are lukewarm, they're going to grow more lukewarm. Which side of the fence are you going to be on? I can't change what's outside. But could we just allow the Holy Spirit to change what's inside?